Welcome to the regular meeting of uh, Calistoga's uh, Planning Commission for February 26, 2020. Can we have a roll call, please? Note for the record that all commissioners are in attendance and welcome back. Great, thank you. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, moving on to C, public comments. Public comments is an opportunity to address the Planning Commission on items of interest to the public that do not appear on the agenda. Comments should be limited to three minutes and Commission cannot consider any issues or take action on items raised during public comment. Anyone out there wish to enlighten us in the community on anything interesting? Quiet crowd for the moment. Okay, well, seeing none, we'll move on to adoption of the meeting agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented tonight? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, going down to F, which is consent calendar, minutes approval, draft minutes from January 22nd. Do we have a motion or do we have any questions? Um, move to uh, approve them. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Super. Moving really quick down to G1 Eurospa use permit UP2020-1 consideration of a use permit application to replace a day spa with two guest rooms within an existing building at a 13 unit inn located at 1202 Pine Street. Staff. Good evening chair, commissioners. Um, First application you have in front of you tonight is noted use permit UP 2020-1 for the Euro Spawn Inn at 1202 Pine. Um, the applicants, um, uh, as currently or at least up until December 31st, the Euro Spa had uh, 15 units and a, a day spa function there um, on the property. The day spa did close in uh, at the end of last year. The applicants are requesting a use permit to um, replace the day spa interior space with two new guest rooms for a, a total of 17 on the property. Um, prior to the mid-1990s, the space where the day spa was, was two guest rooms. So in some ways this would be reverting back to where it was about 20, 25 years ago. Um, as part of this use permit application, um, they would also be adding two additional off-street parking spaces. They have room to accommodate that space on the property. Um, as I said, those guest rooms, uh, the, the construction would be entirely within existing building space. They are separately making some modifications to the property to improve ADA accessibility. Um, we've also included some conditions for them to remove a non-conforming sign that's off property on Lincoln Avenue and to um, provide a roof over their trash enclosure, which is currently non-conforming. Um, we think the, the impact of this application is pretty minimal since it is within existing building space and there's adequate provision for parking on site. Uh, applicants here, staff or them are happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, any questions of uh, commissioners before I open the public hearing? Uh, one of uh, the the sign that is by the library when that is removed is that also going to remove the pole it's on a pole I would have to confirm that if it's the only thing that's on the pole it's on the only thing on the pole I, I think that's quite likely we could make sure that happens okay I have a quick one yes can you confirm <coughs> the location of the trash uh, on, on the site plan, on the yeah. proposed site plan yeah the trash enclosure is um, if you are looking at very the back page. Proposed. Yeah, the, the proposed, the very back page here. Sorry, it's in my thing a little funny. Uh, if you look out towards Pine Street, um, where the sidewalk is, there is a square rectangle that's a little off kilter compared to the parking spaces. <coughs> I had a feeling. That's where the trash enclosure is. There, there really is not another spot for them to put this trash enclosure. My understanding is that it's worked pretty well. It's minimally intrusive. Um, but just to kind of bring it up a little bit closer to code standards, uh, get a get a roof over it keep things dry any other questions okay 
This is a public hearing. I'll open it up if the applicant would like to come up and uh, speak first. That would be great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, being here tonight. Um, Zach, one thing I wanted to point out, uh, we would love to do... Excuse me, could you identify yourself for oh, the I'm record? Sorry. Thank I'm you, Dave, David. Uh, Dave Patel, uh, representing uh, my family and the applicant. Um, so this is, uh, we're 13 rooms today, moving to uh, 15. Excuse but me, we'll I had take my numbers the wrong. And 19. <laughs> um, I, you know, this is pretty uh, straightforward. Oh, yeah. we, we've uh, owned this property for some time. Uh, my my uh, family bought it in the uh, 19, late 90s. Uh, did a bunch of work, pitched the roofs. Um, you know, uh, the skull was already there. Uh, a lot has changed in, in 20 years now. Um, we had a wonderful operator that uh, was with us for the last seven years. And, uh, you know, I think the writing was kind of on the wall, on the wall before this operator even started. So uh, we're essentially looking to, to bring it back to uh, what it originally was. And, uh, and that's about it. But we're, we're excited about this. And it's, uh, like Zach said, it's all within existing buildings and uh, should be pretty uh, painless for everyone involved, including our own guests. So um, do you guys have any questions? I'm happy to take them. Great. Thank you. And we'll wait till we get the public hearing closed. And if we okay. do, we'll call you back up. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? OK, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask uh, the commissioners if they have any questions of the applicant. None? OK. See any problem at all? If not, we'll entertain a vote. Um, uh, one one quick there's yes when the trash enclosure is enclosed totally <clears throat> then you will get you will review those uh, before it gets built I'll come in with uh, the building permit yeah, for the, building permit. the tenant right. or the, the modifications to the structure okay. correct good All right would someone like to make a motion I'll make a motion okay. I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving a two guest unit expansion of Euro Spa and Inn Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. you bet. Okay, moving on to G2 under public hearings. Aurora Park Cottages use permit UP 2018-12 and design review DR 2018-9. Consideration of a use permit and design review applications to allow a three guest unit expansion and an existing seven unit bed and breakfast located at 1807 Foothill. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, so your next application is for um, a use permit and design review for a proposed expansion of the Aurora Park Cottages at 14 or um, at uh, 1807 Foothill. Um, the the application would include a net gain of three guest units for a total of 10 um, at this existing um, bed and breakfast inn in the R110 zoning district. Um, it would involve the conversion of the existing two-bedroom guest cottage that's on the separate, well, the two-bedroom guest cottage that's at the front that's currently one of the guest units um, into an office and manager's unit. Um, currently, this uh, property uses the um, cottage that's adjacent on a separate parcel as the, the manager's unit. Um, and then, there, of course, there's the architectural um, and design review that's part of this application. It's a 1.44 acre property located on Foothill Boulevard between High and uh, High Street and Lerner Drive. It does slope gently down towards Foothill Boulevard. Um, it does have uh, other uses in the area, primarily residential, though this stretch of Foothill does include a number of other um, visitor accommodation uses. Um, this has been in use as a visitor accommodation property since at least the 1950s. Um, there was a proposal to alter it um, around 20 years ago that didn't move forward. Um, that proposal was, was abandoned by the then current owner, um, and some minor exterior improvements were changed or approved at that time. Um, as I said, the use permit and design review applications, it's a, it's a net gain of four building, or four, built, four new buildings, but it's a net gain of just three new guest units. Um, new parking would be provided. Um, including one ADA, sp ADA space for a total of 14 parking spaces uh, for the, the bed and breakfast inn. Uh, the proposed new structures would be larger than the existing cottages, um, about 600 square feet versus 400 square feet. Architecturally, they'd be pretty compatible with the, the current structures there. 
uh, the main two-bedroom guest cottage closest to Foothill that would be converted to the manager's unit in the office. There's a proposed expansion of that building footprint that's also contemplated. Um, otherwise, this does comply with all the R110 development standards, including setbacks, parking. Um, we do have provisions in the bed and breakfast code for um, special considerations and sort of different standards for bed and breakfast that are in the R110 district rather than just the conventional regular R1 district. Um, this does allow for those exceptions um, to allow for um, units of up to 10 uh, total units um, and that the special circumstances that must be applicable for these to kick in uh, include that the bed and breakfast uh, property uh, was authorized by the city as a visitor accommodation of some sort before 2010. Uh, the property is located in the R110 zone. It was, it is established or will be established with no more than 10 rental units and the lot size exceeds 10,000 square feet. Um, this application in this property does meet all those conditions um, and that does allow them to add up to 10 guest units. It does allow them to not have to have an on-site manager um, among some other things. Um, in terms of aesthetics, uh, the four new guest cottages are tucked back from Foothill. As I noted, the architecture is pretty compatible with what's proposed. There is a landscape plan that would continue more or less the current landscaping aesthetic that's included in your packet. Um, new parking is proposed. The uh, landscaping, the grading plans, the drainage plans, those have all been reviewed by our public works department and would pretty dramatically improve the condition of some of the stormwater flows through that property as they come down towards Foothill. We have received several comment letters regarding this property, um, several from some of the residents in the Brandon Ridge Estates subdivision that is accessed um, through a common easement that runs along this, um, this, uh, this subject parcel. Um, those comments, uh, those have been some of the, new, there's some new ones that have been included in front of you or put in front of you tonight. There are several that were included in the packet that went out. We did receive one support letter for this application as well from a former neighbor of the property. Um, generally speaking, um, some of the comments related to this project um, included concerns about noise and traffic from the project. I did reach out to the police chief and see if there had been any complaints or any calls related to this uh, property or this inn. We have not received any, um, at least in the last couple years. Um, one of the concerns was the five properties share. There's an open space and conservation easement. Um, I've provided a copy of that that was in our records. I've provided copies in the back for the public and put those in front of you. Uh, the subject property is not in the area of the open space and conservation um, easement, which you know is, is there for aesthetic and privacy purposes. Um, there is, as, as I mentioned, an easement for access and utilities that runs along the subject parcel. The five parcels share that easement. Um, the city traditionally doesn't get involved in disputes that are private easements amongst parties. Um, but it, it is an open access easement and it has been used in the past for this project as well as the obviously the other four residences that are accessible. Um, some of the other comments did relate to bed and breakfast regulations. Generally, um, most of those comments are not applicable because of the R110 provisions um, and the special use permit provisions for those sort of R110 up to 10 unit bed and breakfast. There were also several comments about the Rural residential hillside zoning. This project's adjacent to the rural residential hillside zoning, but it is not within the rural residential hillside zoning district. Um, so th those are, I think, the primary comments I wanted to raise and address. I'm happy to respond to anything um, specifically. Uh, with that, you do have the use permit and design review application in front of you. Again, the applicant is here. I'm happy to try to answer your questions. Some of them might be better addressed to the applicant. Um, but with that, that concludes my report. Okay, great. So, great. Uh, uh, staff, uh, if you would take uh, liberty, and I think there may be a few questions from commissioners here. Sure. Before we open up. So, go ahead. Um, Zach, I wonder if it would be beneficial. There's this is because this is going to be referenced another time tonight to talk just in general uh, for everyone here. When it talks about the um, B and Bs, and specifically in in this area, and and it talks about them being, you know, accessory and secondary means that the establishment of bed and breakfast facilities in the residential zones shall not exceed 49% of the use of the land and or building area on which 
the facilities are to be located. If you could just talk in general about that so that there's a, there's a good understanding. Yeah, that's a, that's a great provision, and I'm glad you brought that up. That is a general provision for B&Bs in the <coughs> normal B&B standards in the R1 district. That is 100% applicable. We've had some other recent B&Bs come before you, and we've had to address that and make sure that those applications um, adhere to those conditions. Um, the R110 provision that was put in place in 2010 um, for bed and breakfast, these sort of larger lot bed and breakfasts along primarily Foothill, um, do not have to abide by that provision. That is one of the things that, with provision and approval of a use permit by the Planning Commission, the bed and breakfast, the transient use, does not have to be secondary to a residential use on the property. Good. All right. That's my only question. I wanted to ask if any of the parcels shown on the map that you provided do include a leach field on this subject parcel like it <coughs> inset on this map? Not to my knowledge that they don't. Um, we haven't, I haven't received any documentation that they do. I mean, certainly those other four properties have leach fields. They are certainly nearby. Um, but no documents I've seen show that the construction would impinge or affect those in any way. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I, um, we got rid of the comments from the neighbors. Um, basically states, the property extends beyond the shared road space and ingress egress to the cottage's properties would actually have to cross our property. Um, is that having to do with the easement you just explained, or is that a separate it, issue? It, is it, that indeed a... It does have to do with the easement. The easement initially runs along and through this subject parcel. Then, you know, the subject parcel is limited in size. That easement extends along and among the other four parcels that go up into the hillside. Um, because of the way the parcel is shaped, a couple of the parking spaces down toward that are proposed towards the new cottages would be accessed via the easement, but on the neighboring parcel. Again, it's a shared access easement. Uh, there is currently one parking space under the current configuration for the last cottage, I believe, that is currently accessed by that easement off of the adjacent parcel. Okay. And if, but if it's an easement, it's not in violation because it's an right. easement. Benefit of all party. So for the record, um, and some of you may or may not know, uh, this is a copy of the easement that we're referring to and that I am the one that created the easement. I have signed it. This is 22 years ago. And its intent was, as what you've heard today, it was intent to, the intent was simply to have access to, to the parcel that we're, dis we're discussing tonight. And it, um, it doesn't have, in my opinion, any bearing on the lots that I developed and created the scenic easement for to protect them. So I just wanted you to know that that was done. My memory's going, I'll confess, but it was 22 years ago. But that was the intent then and still in my opinion it, it's still valid so um, just wanted to clarify that to you folks okay any other questions from commissioners if not i will open the public hearing and ask the applicant if they he would like to come back up again uh, thank you uh dave patel david patel uh the applicant representing the applicant um Again, another project we're, we're very excited about. We bought this property back in uh, the beginning of 2015. Uh, before doing so, we obviously uh, checked with uh, the city and, and saw that we were, uh, could be able to increase uh, this, this property by uh, four units at the time. It was only six when we bought it. Um, so it was one of the uh, reasons we were attracted to this property. Um, you know, we've been in the hotel, the inn, hotel business uh, for, for many years now. Uh, this was the first kind of B&B that we, we got involved with. And it's been really, uh, it's been a, a real pleasant surprise. Uh, the, the customers that we serve, um, it's just kind of a different uh, clientele than what we're used to when, more on the hotel and inside. And uh, so we're just, we're excited about it. It, it was a surprise. Um, you get some really nice customers uh, that aren't always as demanding as, as we see in some of the, uh, in the Best Western, for instance. And uh, we're just excited. You know, I know uh, people have brought up the, the size of the units. Um, and that, it's absolutely true. I mean, these are, these are bigger units. And I think that's really specific to the fact that you, you know, you just wouldn't build them the way we built them 50 years ago today. Um, the size of the units are there just to, uh, to provide the amenities that people want 
and and frankly to uh, to get the rate that we need to justify this product uh, project as well. Um, so I you know I know there's there's been we've reached out to the neighbors. Um, we've kind of seen everything from a complete non-response to looks great, good luck with the project. Uh, to uh, obviously you guys have uh, you know comments from uh, a couple of the other neighbors um, you know our intention isn't really to you know for us to seem like a pretty simple uh, project um, but we're aware that uh, anytime you you do something like this you know your you know change is tough for some people and um, we're willing to try to mitigate um, any concerns as much as possible uh, it was my opinion uh, in trying to do so with um, some of the neighbors uh, it just wasn't something that was uh, was possible uh, short of just not doing the project um, I do have here with me today uh, Todd Ratfield uh, he's an attorney that's looked at um, obviously the, the CCNR is the easement agreement and uh, he's there if you guys need to speak to um, to that what we believe is not an issue um, Anyhow, we're again we're excited for this. I appreciate all your time, Zach, and um, and, and people before. But uh, happy to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you. Sorry about that. Is public hearing. So if um, anyone else would like to come up and speak, please feel free to do so. Yes. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Michael Glover. I'm a, the owner at 1819 Foothill, which is lot one of Brandon Ridge Estates. My overall concern with the project is that if you really need to see the project, because the, the space that is they're wanting to build on, it's really, as it's called, is the designated remainder of the Brandon Ridge Estates. We are one of, I'm one of four properties. We're five acres each. The designated remainder is a little finger that's encompassed by all by what we consider rural. So my number one concern is keep Calistoga rural where it is rural. We are a rural where we're not in the residential area. The fact that they're wanting to now in, in, in essence encroach upon what we consider Brandon Ridge estates with the, the four other properties. So it's taking away that character of Calistoga the character that why we purchased Calistoga in the first place to be rustic, to be not a St. Helena, but to be out in the country. And that's what we really want to maintain. What has not really been addressed, which, you know, the conservation, there are two 80 foot oak trees on this property. The, the plan does not really show them their size. They're, 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 they extend beyond the road. And I think our own, your own municipal code does not allow the compacting of soil under these trees. So that is a concern of conservation. We need to keep what's rural, rural. Those trees, I think, are very important. But the other issue is really that the, the design of these new units is really not, a, not like the other units. They're, they're set much closer to the road than the existing units. They're much larger. So it's really my contention that that quarter acre does not support the size of what is being meant, to, what they're asking to be built on that property. This would be at the end of my gate. So as we know the valley, noise travels. I hear noise even though there's no, I don't complain because I try to be a good neighbor. I will now complain every weekend of the, the fact that I hear noise, I will do that. I didn't know I needed to put that on record. But I hear noise every weekend, it travels up my driveway. If you put another driveway at the end of my driveway, it's going to even exacerbate the issue even further. So I really stress upon you to do to do what's right. You know, I still think there's an issue that they're, it's my property that they are crossing over. So if, if that needs to be litigated, I will litigate that because I see that as a financial and a fiscal responsibility. If someone were to, I look at it, I'm a CPA, I'm a CFO, I understand risk. If someone were to get injured on that designated piece of property that is mine, any attorney will go after me, will go after the organization. So I need to cover my assets. So that is, needs to be fully explained to me beyond someone just making con a conjecture that 
I have no issue with those people crossing my property. Because now you're asking, the road was not meant for the, the, the commercial use. It was meant for four, four family owners. Um, we maintain that road. It's a, it's, not, it's a private road. We have to maintain it. It's up to us. So it's really the intent is, is it really, Brandon Ridge Estates was meant to be a rural environment with four homes on it, with a designated remainder, with no real intent to go on that property. It's a very small piece, and if you really under, if you understand the map, it's a finger that sticks into and it's surrounded by rural and, and wooded conservation area. Um, so I, I, I appreciate you know the time and to understand. And if you have any questions, I would certainly be happy to answer anything. Thank you. Before we go on, I, I think it's important to clarify a couple of things. And I, I know that planning language gets a little strange sometimes. But you know that the term designated remainder means that that, that portion is remaining in the ownership of the original developer. It's not designating it as some sort of open space. Do you, do you so realize I'm not, that? I'm not saying it's an open space. I'm trying to understand conceptually, if you were to walk that it, property, it, you would understand that this is not really a piece of 1807. It's a piece of Brennan Ridge Estates. No, it, it's not. It's a designated remainder that remained in the property of the developer. It's not part of that. It's not part of, of, of anything that you have control of as an association. Well, I'm not. Well, it, it's it's a fifth property. It's a fifth unit that that is part of our homeowners association. It would be the same that if you made a demand on one of your neighbors, it, and they own their lots. It's it's the same thing. You don't right. have a right to make that demand. What we do is we are responsible for the road and the egress. But you are not responsible for that designated remainder because you don't own it. No, I'm not saying that. I well, did. but you're but you're. You're saying that it can't be used for something else because it's part of what no, you I'm have. No, I'm just trying to use what the municipal code in, in terms of stressing conservation, the tree issue. There, there's other, uh, what I'm trying to say, there's special circumstances with which cr surround this piece of property. Well, and I appreciate that. I just, I want to, I want to make sure that you're, uh, you're clear on what the actual terminology of designated remainder means yeah and, wasn't and please way, appreciate what trying, that trying what that, that entails that we that's our piece of property I'm just trying to conserve what's there the natural beauty with which that piece of piece of property offers us as on Brandon Ridge estate well and I appreciate that I, I'm not a big fan of air quotes but um, so who, who does own that property the applicant owns the property yeah who, I didn't it's hear that. but it's it's Aurora State's ones. Okay. It tells. Right. Yeah. The okay. um, second question is this is and this was in response really to the letter curiosity I had today. Today I walked the property with an arborist. There are no eighty foot oak trees on that property. Well, they dispense this way. There are no eighty foot oak trees on that property. The biggest one is a little less than forty feet. We walked every single oak tree. So I'm, I'm concerned that what I'm hearing is... Well, if you look at the picture I took, they, you can look at the tree and it ex expands beyond the road. And we know the road is 20 feet. And it's 20 feet from the road. So okay, then that, the other half of the tree goes the other way. What I'm saying is that we went out and actually measured the trees. And there are no 80-foot oak trees. Okay. There are... There are... But, are there not trees there to be saved? Whether there are trees there to be tree saved. That should require, in, in compliance with our municipal code, right. that there's nothing to be done to impact those trees. Absolutely correct. And there were, you counted there were other seven smaller trees under that same correct. enclave. That's right. And there are mitigation factors that are accommodated, as far as I can tell, in the plan for that. So I'm, that's where I'm not seeing the concern. Well, I, well, there's a concern in terms of that they're wanting to build these larger units at the end of the driveway that's going to cause additional congestion, noise in our neighborhood. What does that have to do with the trees? Well, I'm just, I said in addition to that. Okay. Thank you. Hello. 
My name's Alan Morris. I live at 1821 Foothill Boulevard. I was the original resident there 22 years ago, 21. Um, at the time, I lived in San Francisco, an urban area. I looked throughout Napa Valley. I decided on Calistoga because of its rural atmosphere. It's beauty, it's quiet, the friendly people, and it was very nice. When I went up there to take a look, to decide whether to purchase this unit, I saw the cottages there. It was a concern, but not much because it fit into the rural character and it was small enough. Now, in the past 22 years, there are four of us up there all zoned RH. It's agricultural. It's rural. It's quiet. It's beautiful. It's a slice of heaven, as we call it. We're all very friendly up there. We all look out for each other, and we enjoy the peace and seclusion. I have a problem with this, in that it will result in not a small bed and breakfast, but a hotel. 10 units. This isn't one building like the Chantrick Inn or the Pink Flamingo or whatever the name is. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm from Las Vegas. Um, it's, it's multiple units going out and encouraging onto our beautiful space of peace and tranquility. What will happen is great increase in traffic great increase in guests. You know what happens here. People drink, they go out, they want to party, they sit out under the stars, and the noise does float. It floats all over. It'll increase the traffic. It'll increase the number of people that have to service the property, and it will decrease our property values. Put yourselves into our position that you own a, a, a property that you worked very hard for, and you found that slice of heaven. And now a hotel is going to go in where every one of your guests has to go through that area. They have to see that, and they have to deal with the noise and the people walking up the, the roadway, which none of them consider that it's a uh, private road. People who drive up, and it's one lane. The construction alone would be a, a severe headache for everyone that lives there. But the long-term consequences would result in decrease in property values, which results in decreased property taxes for, for Calistoga. Um, I would like to, I don't want to take up too much time because I provided all of you with two pieces of information that are very lengthy. And I hope you take the time to really consider what was written so I don't have to take up your time here. But I would like to address what Mr. Patel, a few of the things that Mr. Patel talked about. He said, change is tough. <laughs> yeah, change is tough, but that doesn't have anything to do with this. This is an incursion into our enjoyment of our properties. If, the, if their property had been going along Foothill Boulevard itself, that'd be one thing. But it's going into and close to the RH area. So it's, a, it's an incursion into our zoning area. And it, there is a leach field immediately adjacent to that that services three of the four units. We have had constantly had issues with drainage in that area. It's cost all of us in this uh, BRE thousands of dollars trying to control this. We understand that they're going to, uh, well, let me get back to some of Mr. Patel's comments. Um, he said he reached out to the neighbors. I've never been contacted, which is a very strange thing because they have all of my contact information. 
I just, I only found out because my, <coughs> my neighbor, Mr. Glover, called me and asked me if I had an opinion on this recently. I had no idea. Today, he also told me that they, they got an approval for doing a well in the area. And that I never was informed about that. Again, very strange because the Patels have all my information and my wife's information. I'd like to ask the Patels how many hotels they own. Um, Mr. Morris, and yes. we know each other fairly well, uh, two things. Um, could you could you shorten it up a little bit, if you would, please? Okay. And, and, the, and what, the things you're bringing up the well, they're really not pertinent to the issue today? Well, the pertinence to it is the lack of um, notice to I'm people. not sh there again I'm not a, a I don't even know that the law requires that so I'm I'm just trying to be open I don't okay. think it does so right. just trying to keep the, the record clear here all right okay well then I'll keep it very short I hope Please, you, thank you I hope you all read the information that I took a long time in, in writing now it's not going to impact me immediately like it will mr. Glover but it will impact all of us on there because of the incursion the extra noise the construction and it's changed the entire character before BRE was built it was a pristine jungle area but once they were built it's a different story it's it's a residential rural area and this will be an incursion into that and result in decreased property values. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excuse me, Mr. Morris, could I ask you one question? I just want to clarify on your, um, your sort of not being noticed or yes. not being informed of the project. Yes. I just, I can't help but see that the, the email that you transmitted to the city was almost three weeks ago. So you've known about it for some time. Well, that's the amount of time I've known about it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and, and retain the right to open it if we need to again. Um, questions from commissioners? Just comments. Um, first of all, I completely empathize and understand the frustration of a uh, construction project going on anywhere near you. Uh, and also, of course, I completely appreciate the rural uh, environment of Calvastoga, but at the end of the day, there's only one way to completely prevent construction and development, and that is to purchase the properties that are next door to you. Just like you have um, perfect rights and privileges of real estate uh, owner, so do the other um, owners of the properties nearby. And our job as planning commissioners, of course, is to understand and represent the general plan and the, and the zoning codes and how each property and development uh, is integrated with that. So our hands are somewhat tied because we work within the rules and the law. So some of the things that you're pointing out, well, I completely understand, but there's not really nothing we can do. Just comments, thoughts. I just wanted to ask Zach briefly if the um, Heritage Oak preservation guidelines, that those will all apply to these oak trees and to the drip lines that are shown on the survey by Cinquini Passerino and uh, we don't need to add any conditions because those will already yes th those will be followed any improvement plans that do come in if this application were to be approved they would go through review with both our public works building and of course planning departments who would ensure that our tree preservation ordinance and all our environmental ordinances that are there to protect heritage oaks and other um, special trees um, would be followed and monitored throughout the course of construction um, can I just add something to that? Because it's, I did meet with the arbors today out on the site, and and uh, they're actually prepared a letter uh, that will that will be given to Zach that will go in excess of of those regulations. So there are a number of things that he wants to do in anticipation uh, of the construction to to in, nutrient wise with the trees. So. I feel you know very comfortable with that um, and I will also say just in, in passing because it's mentioned in here um, if you ever want to know about nesting birds anywhere <laughs> ask an arborist um, and and we talked at length about that and he said 
there are no nesting owls on that property. I would also, through the chair, that the, the site plan for this has evolved. This is obviously an application that's been in the works through our office for a little while, just looking at the application number 2018. Um, it, it has evolved substantially, and one of the things that the applicant has taken steps to is reduce the potential impacts on the tree. There was additionally plans to sort of make a roundabout sort of feature around the tree, and that that went by the wayside. The cottages were moved out of the hillside to reduce the cut and fill. Um, so there have been steps taken uh, with the proposed plans to sort of reduce the, the impact on, on the, the nature and the biology of that area. Um, the, uh, Mr. Morris brought up a question. He was not notified. Um, do you, I mean, I know it must be a record that every yeah. person that was within whatever given distance was notified. And I don't know that Mr. Morris's <coughs> property was farther away than that because they're large parcels. So, so I, I don't know why he would not have known about that. We, we, we did send out public hearing notices um, as required by law and all property owners within a specific radius. I believe it included all of the four properties in Brandon Ridge Estates. I would have to double check and confirm that all four were in that radius, but I believe they were. There was also, of course, the ad in the paper as required by law. Uh, I would note we always encourage applicants to reach out to neighbors. We, it's not something we can require. Um, sometimes applicants are able to do that. Sometimes they're not. But um, at least on the city's part, we did take all the necessary steps to make sure notice was done according to law. Okay, great. Thank you. I've got one yes, comment. Go yeah, uh, just I want to clarify something with the applicant. The uh, what's currently being used as the manager's um, cottage, uh, from my understanding, that will be put back in the housing stock as a rental. That's correct. Okay, I just, I, I, it's, um, yeah, that's a uh, two bedroom home directly across from the property we're talking and about. And will not be used as part of, part of the, the bed and breakfast crib. So I just want to, uh, it's not a, not a lot of inventory, but I'm, gl I'm glad we have some inventory coming back in. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Any other comments well, from commissioners? Before yes. we go on, I do think it's important to acknowledge and all, all that the Patels have done for Calistoga through their community involvement and participation in our local service clubs. That, that doesn't go unnoticed um, when we're reviewing things like this. Um, Mr. Morris, would you, if you'd like to speak, uh, I will I will allow you to do so, please. Yeah. I, I, I will take it back by the hearing because it sounds, especially with your comment, that there's there's quite a bias toward helping the Patels reach the potential for their hotel group. And that you would even consider their public service as part of the, the review of, of an application for building is quite absurd. And it, it begs that issue of bias in, in this committee. I want to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was that I think upgrading the front portion of this project that is most closely adjacent to Foothill Boulevard will have a, a positive impact on the successfulness of this project by giving it a gable roof, helping it address the entrance from the driveway. I think that should have a positive impact on, on the design of the project. Um, when accessibility upgrades are undertaken, it's always nice to see ramps and stairs share a similar path, uh, offer a similar experience when accessing an entrance so one doesn't appear secondary to another. There might still be time to adju adjust that route of travel as you're creating a new access for that front building. Um, and those were my comments about the project. Okay. Actually, Zach just notified me, reminded me that I need to be recused on this. So I'll just reinvent my comments. Gee, what did you do this time? <laughs> Too close. It's a proximity recusal. Okay. Okay, okay that being said, uh, any more comments from the commissioners uh, for staff? Or? Yeah, I'll make one more uh, comment. And I just, it's something I just take objection to. I uh, take objection to finding a communication that is saying that we as planning commissioners are going to be held personally liable 
um, for the decisions we make and uh, it's it's a threat and I object to that it was not meant like that and I apologize it, it certainly was not meant like that well your apology is accepted thank you okay okay that being said uh, let's move on uh, if uh, everybody's um, done let's entertain a motion I'll make a motion um, I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving use permit 2018-12 and design review 2018-9 at 1807 Foothill Boulevard do we have a second second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed very good thank you okay moving on to find my pink paper here uh, G G3 and I apologize if I don't pronounce this quite this word quite <laughs> correctly um, maybe I can use the help from the applicant out there if I could they could be loud enough I I, I don't want to mess it up and embarrass myself here so you get your shot really early so I'll, I'll know how to pronounce it as we go through real quick just give it to me and I'll read off the Okairi Okairi okay then I'm gonna do that Okairi bed and breakfast use permit UP 2019-19 and design review uh, DR 2019-10 consideration of a use permit and design review application to establish an eight unit bed and breakfast and modify an existing structure previously used as a bed and breakfast at 1415 Foothill Thank you, Chair, and I'm happy to report that staff has been pronouncing Okairi correctly internally for the last couple weeks, so um, we're happy about that. Um, as noted, um, this is a new use permit for a new bed and breakfast at a location that formerly was entitled for a bed and breakfast. That use permit has lapsed. It's la been lapsed for a year or two at this point. Um, formerly known as the Pink Mansion, it's still very pink out there on Foothill. So this use permit proposal would reestablish the bed and breakfast use um, at that location. Um, parking is obviously a big concern for any sort of um, bed and breakfast, and it's a particular point of concern for this application. Um, this is also a design review um, because there are architectural and landscape modifications proposed to the structure. This is a very old structure. It has been heavily modified over the years. Um, a historic resource, uh, re some historic resource research was done on this a number of years ago. It was determined the building does not qualify at any sort of historic level. In fact, it is not listed on either our A or B list of historic resources in Calistoga, nor is it listed on Napa County's historic resources list. It's been so heavily modified over the years. Our suspicion is most of those modifications probably happened in the 80s when the bed and breakfast use was established. Um, the bed and breakfast use under the previous entitlements did grow over time. Um, in 2010, when the new R110 provisions came into effect for the R110 zoning district that we discussed in the last application, where under certain circumstances you can go up to as many as 10 units without a resident manager, um, this uh, property was then given permission to go up to eight units. Um, eight units is in fact what the applicant is requesting in this application They're, they are the new owners um, under the changes that are proposed the pink mansion would no longer be pink it would be white there are some as mentioned there are some modifications to the architecture proposed a new ADA bathroom uh, generally conforming to the existing architecture would be built on the front the existing turret would be raised up to give it a little bit more prominence and increased floor space on the second floor uh, as I noted, the building would be painted white, uh, black trim, and there would be a little bit of softening in terms of some of the Victorian um, elements of the building and incorporation of some more contemporary design features. There are elevations included in your packet. There is also um, a sample photo uh, showing sort of the design motif that the applicants are going for in terms of colors and materials. Um, you know, some of the we did get one letter um, regarding this application and concern for it from Nick Kite. Um, it, Nick gave us a very well written um, 
um, letter here and he did raise some concerns related to this application. Um, this is a case where we always appreciate the input of public because it helps us catch things that sometimes staff misses. Um, he did catch a errant condition of approval um, saying that the conditions from the old use permits should remain in effect. Those use, old use permits have expired, so those shouldn't remain in effect. So um, you will find in front of you a modified set of conditions of approval that eliminates that condition. Part of the reason I think that was included was to sort of cover the base of the uh, required provision for the conversion of um, any sort of uh, water fixtures to low flow and conservation devices. That was done back in 2010 when this place was modified. Um, but just to cover our bases, we've put that back in there in the conditions of approval um, explicitly. I believe it's the new very last condition that you'll see on the back page, uh, number 12. Uh, Mr. Kite also did catch something that staff missed and it was in the fine language related to the serving of meals there. Um, staff missed an or when we were reading the code. Um, and again, this is a good reason why we want other people besides us looking at these things, the public, planning commissioners, et cetera. So unfortunately, staff did give applicants some bad adv advice and bad guidance in terms of saying that uh, under the, our reading of the code, we thought them serving dinner to guests would be allowed. I'm looking at the code a second time. It's pretty clear that that is not allowed. I did call and apologize to the applicant this morning for giving them that errant advice. We understand that affects their business plans and their um, ideas for the space, um, but it is there in the code pretty black and white. Um, so to emphasize that, I have added a draft condition of approval uh, pertaining to that. Uh, with that being said, parking at this site is challenging. Um, this particular property is accessed off of Foothill by um, sort of this common driveway that multiple properties use that goes up the hill. There are two tandem spaces that are identified. Um, they're existing tandem spaces that wouldn't be modified. They are identified as being for staff parking. There are eight other parking spaces proposed in the existing parking lot. They've taken out a big tree that used to be in the middle of the parking lot that made that really tight. They're going to be providing some additional and improved ADA um, uh, parking uh, facilities. There are two parallel parking spaces which are snug, um, one of which, space eight on the site plan, um, could leave itself being vulnerable or I guess being vulnerable to backing out rather than pulling in through the parking lot and turning around. Excuse me. So that is something that the Planning Commission will want to discuss, any potential concerns related to the parking and circulation there. Um, presumably, I haven't had a chance to talk to the applicants, presumably they were anticipating a couple full-time staff and some part-time staff. I imagine without the dinner service, it's possible that number might go down a little bit. Um, on the whole, though, uh, they are also proposing some landscape modifications. This property will still remain pretty heavily screened from Foothill. There is a lot of vegetation along the front there between that sort of informal drive that goes up the hill and the actual property. My understanding is quite a bit of that's going to remain. That being said, um, kind of with the theme of the how they're going with this property, there is a landscape plan you'll see in your packet that shows some pretty substantial landscape improvements in the front yard. Um, some pretty heavy Japanese influ influences, Japanese maples, some water features. Um, any of those landscape plans will, of course, have to be reviewed at building permit time for um, water uh, conformance with all our different codes and environmental provisions. But on the whole, I think um, while they are of a you know little bit different character than you see on that stretch of foothill, I do think they will be screened pretty heavily by some of the existing and remaining vegetation. Um, the property itself in terms of the physical structure and the impro uh, proposed improvements in terms of height, setbacks, all those things are conforming with the code for the R110 district. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And of course, the applicant and their team is here, and I'm sure they'd be happy to answer questions as well. I believe I need to recuse myself. Proximity. <laughs> I, I just want to be clear on the parking. You reviewed the proposed layout and, and the setbacks were mentioned in one of the letters and the, the, is the proposed parking compliant with those? So, so the two existing tandem spaces um, on the, I think it would be the west, west side, side, those are strictly speaking non-conforming. Okay. They're existing spaces though. Um, the proposed eight spaces in the existing parking lot, as I said, it's cozy and they're 
are obviously some concerns with the two, particularly one of the parallel spaces and how it may actually work and um, impact, um, you know, sort of day-to-day -day circulation on the site. When I did review the, going back in the history on this project, when this was approved in 2010 to go from six units to eight units, at that time it actually had less parking than it is being provided with now under this proposed plan. Um, they sort of relied on the informal parking off of the site for staff completely. Probably not the best approach at that time, so this is giving us an opportunity to hopefully um, clean up and improve the parking situation there. Um, there are probably some alternatives. They might be costly in terms of further improving the parking there, but that's something, you know, obviously your commission can discuss. Um, a question re related to that and, and going in that, I'm also concerned about the parking and that, that parallel space down towards Foothill. Just visually, as, as what I drove up the driveway, I'm guessing that that drive is, at, at that point, close to a 20% grade. Um, that seems pretty reasonable. Uh, generally, 20% grades are, other than in San Francisco, are, uh, are not great um, to park cars on. And if there's no curbs or anything like that, you've got nothing to bank your wheels on. Um, so I'm, I'm curious as to whether, whether there may be a different solution that may, have, may involve, you know, maybe in broadening some of that drive area to capture some of the area across the driveway from there that, that could be made into a more reasonable, identifiable parking space. Um, I, I just I'm not sure all the alternatives have been have been looked at yeah it's it's definitely possible um, you know and, and the architect is here she could probably answer some of these questions in a little bit more detail than I could I, I think at least theoretically it would be possible to some of the landscaping in the front to convert that to another parking space and remove that front uh, yeah. you know uh, parallel space that's probably feasible um, she could probably address that in terms of you know any other things I'm not thinking of though and then I'm assuming obviously it, because it's here but I just to clarify the path of travel is 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 um, qualifies in terms of its slope it's been this has been routed to our building official who's sort of our ADA expert so yeah. he's reviewed it hasn't raised any concerns obviously when you know more detailed plans come in it'll be looked at again okay. um, and if there are any minor modifications that need to be made those can be done Great. Another question I have. Uh, fire. Every time we come through this, I see there's no. Did fire review this? Did it get sent to fire? I, I, I will. I was on the commission. God, I've been on a long time. Uh, back when we addressed the parking and issues, and it was a big issue back then, yeah. as it is now. And and fire had a concern, if my memory serves me correctly. And I'm just wondering where they're at on this. And and uh, Commissioner Wilkes brought up the, the grades and, and the new codes. I mean, we have. To, I think we have to be very careful to protect the property owner and 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 the guests. Has that been looked at, reviewed? We review or route all applications to public works, building, and fire. Um, I don't remember any express fire concerns. Okay. Um, that being said, fire also always gets to look at things again when building permits come in as well. Okay, that, that, that is a concern, and as you know, with the fires, and, and, and especially if we're this side of Foothill, um, it's going to be scrutinized very closely. Sure. So I just want to pick that record that, that gets looked at closely if this were to be approved. Okay. Um, yes. Did you? Have, I'm sorry. Did you have a? That's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm just there. One more. I, I had meant to say before. I think just to clarify for the record, the the two tandem spaces, um, they, they are clearly spaces that were there when it was way back when it was a house. That was the original driveway. So, so they are existing nonconformance from the way way back, as we would say. All right. Okay. That being said, and if everybody on the commission's um, done asking their questions, I will open this up to the public. The applicant, uh, he's back there. You would like to come forward? Just a brief overview, going back to how we started the meeting. Wanted to share with you guys what. Could you please on. identify yourself? My name is Peter Chang, and Thank I you. am the proprietor of the Chang family behind Tadaima Incorporated and the Okairi B&B. Just wanted to share with you guys that we are longtime 
for now longtime residents since 2017 of the Napa Valley and my family comes into Calistoga to work with my colleagues at least twice a week for a long time now. And the meaning behind the words Tadaima in Okairi is what we hope to be able to convey to our guests. Tadaima means I'm home and Okairi means welcome home in Japanese. So that's the feeling that we hope to convey to our guests. And I share with you that we live in the Napa Valley because we are very, very fond of the Napa Valley style of hospitality. We are in the hospitality industry ourselves. Um, we lived here for three years and when we fell in love with this property, very much fell in love with all of the Victorian aspects of it. And we just wanted to renovate it, bring it to the modern era and put our own kind of style of hospitality and still have it to be congruent and conformant to everything we love about the Napa Valley. So I just wanted to share that with the Planning Commission tonight, and I wanted to uh, address and acknowledge what Zach had said to the Planning Commission of what we've learned recently regarding the finer language of um, the BNB uh, code. So we are well aware that um, dinner service is not something that we'll be vouching for. We're very happy to very much go forward and continue with the concept as it is designed in front of you today, knowing that we are going for breakfast and anything before noon only. And I also do want to confirm Zach's kind of uh, assumption about our staff count. Now that we know that dinner is um, off the table, we do feel like that will significantly reduce the total staff that we'll, you will need for the Okari BNB project. Will that change uh, affect anything with the kitchen or with your desire to get a, a ABC license? No. So you, because I understand they're, they're, you are going to pursue an ABC license, is that correct? Yes. Um, the previous owners of the property, when it was functioning under the Pink Mansion, um, I would have to look back into the records to know the exact uh, permit, but they had a permit for uh, wine tasting in the afternoons that um, could be packaged in to the overall rate of the room and that is what we will be once again reapplying for but but that will be that will be alcohol service for only for guests only for guests on on site nothing outside okay our entity um also owns what was formerly known as bosco's trattoria right. downtown so um there's no need for us to serve anyone outside of guests at the bnb well it and it, by extension, it raises the question. There's in the letter that that we received, it's um, talking about the the thought that the wine cellar you're proposing would be something that would be cross marketed with your winery. Is that is this what is the purpose of the wine cellar? It would be for for the tasting area for the afternoon, just like the previous owners used it, right? But there's, I believe that was not from my letter, but that was but, from, uh, right, from Nick's Mr. Letter. Nick Kite's letter. So, but it would only be for guests. Yeah, that's why we're we're completely separating on the yeah. branding, the marketing, the entity wise. There's, you know, our wine brand, and this yeah. is called Okairi, which is something okay. completely separate. Um, and then going back to the parking for a minute, and I, I mean, I see Bev back there. So, I do you, is there any possibility to to try to explore an alternative to that last parallel space down by Foothill, if, even if it involved, I mean, it, it would re involve some retaining on the corner of the driveway, but it would be a potential to get a more traditional <laughs> and, and parking my, space. Mike, I have the same concerns about parking. My concern is that if, if that space is not easy to use, that, that guest is just gonna park on Foothill. Um, right, and that's what what I want to avoid in this is is having your guest parking spillover because the parking isn't sufficient or isn't clearly marked or isn't isn't safe to use. Um, I would have to talk more with Bev, who would be more knowledgeable on this subject. But um, a couple of things just arbitrarily come to mind, which is clearly marking two spaces of concern. As for the live-in managers only. And therefore, guests still have their designated one spot per room. And if we were to clearly mark those spots, maybe that can mitigate some of those concerns. Um, beyond that, 
I would have to ask Bev to be able to further answer your question on possibilities. Do you think it would be, if we wanted to, as we would move forward, to, to if you would be agreeable to the idea that, that on the parking issue, you would continue to work with staff to see if there was an alternative solution to that one parking spot? Absolutely. I think throughout the whole permitting process, we'd like to be as involved with the city, all including fire and yeah. every, all of the, um, the relevant parties as much as possible. Well, I think that that would be something that would be worthwhile to, to ask. And, and, and of course, the whole fire, I mean, we know fire trucks hate to back up. Yeah. And uh, so that will be an issue that, that you will have to, to deal with, but that will come later. Yes, we, um, and just, we have had uh, off-record meetings with Steve yeah. Campbell himself, and he has come to kind of put together a game plan for fire, because as I mentioned earlier, we are residents of Napa Valley. We're not naive to how big of a concern fire is. We firsthand experienced it. So um, what he told us is that because it's modifications to the ex existing structure, um, he had a way to utilize that front, um, almost like a turnout in front of the, the right. mansion sign, and that would give him enough, um, his hoses had enough trajectory to reach the building. But, um, but that is not, not to speak on his behalf or to speak on things that I'm not Okay. qualified to speak on but just to make you aware that we are very active in consulting with all the relevant parties within the city to ensure the safety of our managers our employees and our guests okay Great. i'm glad to hear that and before you sit down can i ask one quick question yeah, absolutely it was a, i wanted to ask about the on-site manager having one not having one asking for that exception in this case you plan to have one yes would not would, would having that as a requirement change your plans going forward? I think this goes back a little bit to the earlier question of the, the parking situation because we ourselves are concerned, right? It's beyond just safety. It's a guest experience issue with how tight the parking is. So in our minds, to be completely transparent, we feel like we want to have a live-in manager and we have them on staff already. To, they're skip, slated to come in do the soft opening day, ensure all the operations, but eventually we would like for them to be able to um, be off-site managers and potentially open up another parking spot as well on site. Any other questions of the applicant? If not, uh, thank you so much and we'll continue on. Anyone else out there like to speak? Very quiet. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, if there's no other questions of staff, then I guess we'll, does staff want to say something? He's yeah, I, I, through the chair, I'd just like to address a couple of things. Sure. Um, related to the ABC permitting, you know, obviously under previous understanding, that was going to be re related primarily to the potential dinner service. Um, without that, we'll have to figure out what sort of ABC license they're looking to come in with. Um, there is a condition of approval that there may be additional permissions they need to get pertaining to that up to and including going to the city council to perhaps get, uh, get some necessary approvals there. So we'll be working with them to kind of more fully understand their plans in light of some, you know, today's recent changes. Um, it is pretty common for bed and breakfast and inns in Calistoga to have an ABC license to be able to serve wine or beer to the guests of the inn itself. That's not considered a tasting room per se under our definition of tasting room. So I just want to be really careful anytime somebody mentions the term tasting room that we're keeping an eye on that and that's not going to be, uh, or at least as we understand it, that would not be a tasting room under our definition of tasting room. It would give them permission to serve alcohol to their guests, not to sell alcohol. P precisely, yeah. precisely. Um, related to some potential, any conditions you, the Planning Commission, would like to put in pertaining to parking, I, I think that staff would be more than happy to continue to work with them on parking. Um, that could, we definitely just would want that direction from you, whether that's something you feel comfortable having just staff address, or if similar to, say, the Crystal Geyser application you had at the last meeting, 
where you would like to see that parking plan come back to you. So that, that would just be the one request mm -hmm. staff would have to make sure you give us that guidance. Okay. Well, and we could leave it up to your discretion if you have concerns and you think it, it's, it's, it's questionable in your opinion. Maybe you bring it back to staff. But at this point, you, we could go on these kind of things forever and ever, and we have a lot of things to deal with. Yeah, I, I would suggest if we do that, and, and I would like to suggest that, that putting something in the record for, uh, for you folks to continue to work with staff on that, and you could just circulate it to us. Um, without any need to come back so that we we've, we've got an idea but I, I I we we've identified what we think the issue is let's see if we can find a solution to it and uh, and it would it would go beyond uh, yeah so commissioners good with that okay I um, and I would just like to say in general that um, the the I'm very comfortable with the fact that this is not a classic Victorian um, structure by any means. Um, I'm not sure that that some of the fretwork didn't come up from from Amazon if Amazon was around then. Um, and so I certainly have no issue with the idea of the architectural direction you're trying to go here. Um, and I and I do believe that it will be an enhancement. Um, when you're when you're finished, uh, I am like I say I'm I'm still concerned about s access. I'm concerned about the steepness of the drive and and how easy that is to do. And so I really encourage you to try to stretch a little bit to to make that an easier, more gracious entry. I think that your guest will appreciate it, um, and I know that the fire department will. And uh, so that would be really all I. Okay. That being said, uh, if we have a motion. I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving use permit 2019-19 and design review 2019-10 for 14 Foothill Boulevard. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Commissioner Cooper, are you coming back? <laughs> Okay, moving moving on to G4, Picayune use permit UP 2020-2, consideration of a use permit application to allow non-amplified live music and special events at an existing retail tasting room business located at 1329 Lincoln Avenue, Suite B. Staff. Thank you, Chair. Um, so your next item, as noted, this is for Picayune Sellers. Um, last year, roughly a year ago, we brought to you a use permit um, for Picayune, which is a tasting room, to move from a building behind the depot um, to the building at 1329 Lincoln. Um, as you probably recall, the building at 1329 is one of our newer buildings downtown. Uh, Illumination Technologies offices are in the um, upper floor of that building. This was originally an art gallery when it was first opened and, and built, uh, you know, roughly 20 or 15, 20 or so years ago. Um, Picayune, um, as you're probably aware, as I said, um, it, it is a winery with wine tasting facility there um, and also has a heavy retail component. Um, the, the applicant has really stressed and been successful with her retail component. One of the interesting things about this property is that there is a roughly 30 by 35 foot courtyard behind the property. It's actually a really neat little intimate space. There's an accessory two-story building at the rear of the parcel. So it, it's kind of one of these informal indoor-outdoor spaces that's you know really enclosed on three sides. Um, this property is adjacent to the bank and um, does come up adjacent to the bank parking lot. It is separated by a six-foot redwood fence. Um, the applicant last year, upon moving into that space, had some conversations with staff about doing some events um, in, in this space and in the store. What we came to at that time was to um, review and ultimately approve an administrative use permit um, under the code that allowed them and gave them sort of the year to, to do some of these events to see how they worked out. Um, notice was sent out to property owners within 300 feet at that time that staff was reviewing and would be potentially approving an administrative use permit for these events. 
These events included uh, pickup parties for the taste of the winery, Picayune, um, pretty common at, at a lot of our wineries here in town. Um, some dinners and also some live music unamplified in the courtyard and some movie nights. My understanding um, from the applicant is that they may have only actually ended up doing one of the movie nights last year. I don't know how well it was attended. Um, but in lieu of coming back year after year to do administrative use permits through staff or one-off special event permits, um, the applicant has applied to have sort of ongoing permission in their overall use permit um, to have these events on an ongoing basis. Um, probably the biggest concerns related to these would be noise. I think that's pretty minimal because it is a pretty well enclosed space. Um, it would be subject to our noise ordinance. Any music would be required to be non-amplified. And most of the surrounding uses that would potentially be impacted by noise uh, probably won't be open most of the time during the hours where most of these events would occur. Um, parking is always something that we're having to look at anywhere in town, but really pay special attention to downtown. Um, a large chunk of my staff report is dedicated to sort of analyzing the what the parking code says about these sorts of events, and, and frankly, it's f somewhat silent on these kind of events. These are these are special temporary things that the zoning code doesn't really contemplate for with parking ratios. Um, this site is um, does have sort of parking rights, I guess you could call it. There's no on-site parking, um, but the established uses, um, you know, have sort of um, the understanding that there would be parking for, I believe, um, I believe 18 uh, spaces. Um, based on just looking at some comparable uses to the events, looking at some of the mitigating factors that these would include happen during off hours, that some of the people might bike or walk to these events, you know, at most, it, staff seems to think that, you know, we'd probably be looking at a demand of maybe 10 additional parking spaces. That's really, again, only when these events are going to occur. And if you look at the proposed calendar of events that the applicant submitted, again, even with best case scenario, weather, everything else, you're looking at just a couple hours a week where you would have this extra demand for parking. And of course, our parking code is relatively silent when it talks about parking demand for temporary things. We do obviously have provisions in the code where if there is an increased parking demand and you can't provide parking on site, we do have an in lieu fee schedule for parking. It's about $2,800 per space. Um, that, that goes into funds that we have that are um, supposed to be put towards providing and enhancing parking downtown. Um, so, so really, you know, probably the one issue um, uh, that staffs of the opinion that this planning commission really needs to consider is is parking or or the lack of parking um, for this space and the potential for these events. We don't have a lot of properties downtown that are entitled just in their use permit to have ongoing permission to do events. Uh, frankly, we don't have a lot that come to us and ask to do events. We know that there are a lot of events that happen without permits. Um, we are obviously pretty complaint driven. Um, and I can say we haven't received any complaints or pushback about any of the applicants events they hosted last year. We did, of course, notice out all the surrounding property owners again um, for this hearing. Haven't heard any pushback. Um, just out of an abundance of caution, we did draft a condition of approval um, that would require the applicant to give her immediate neighbors notice, advance notice of any events that are going to be going on and provide a contact number just in case there's an issue or question or something comes up where they can reach somebody both before and during an event to express any concerns or get any clarification about things. Um, with that, that clarify or concludes my report. I know the applicants here, uh, both I and she would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Well, I'll just open it right up to public hearing. Claire, would you like to come up and... Claire Weinkauf, I'm the owner of Picayune Cellars. I'm not sure do you want me to give a lot more detail about the kind of event or Zach did a pretty good job explaining. Um, I Mostly we are talking about uh, live music on Friday from um, March to October, November permitting and it's in general from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, it's attended mostly, I want to say, by a lot of local and then the uh, tourists. 
Um, we've done, yes, we've done once, instead of the uh, live music, we've I've also tried the movie. Uh, it was a little late in the season, a little cold, so I didn't, <laughs> that was not as, uh, as well attended. Um, I, in general, those events, because they, they start when most of the store downtown are closing, I've never had any um, like customers struggling to find a parking lot, but I cannot, honestly. Uh, and I don't know if you have any particular uh, question. Then the, the pickup party is really uh, free time a year. Um, and it's, um, in general, it's never a whole group. It's, you know, I give a big bracket of time. So it's from one to five. And, pick up, and people come and then grab their, their wine and go. Hopefully shop at the other store. The goal is trying to dynamize and kind of find, you know, excuses for people to come downtown you know, a little later in the evening um, or, you know, on weekends when it might not be as easy. So, at least that's what I'm trying to Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. I had a question for you. Yes. In general, is it safe to say that um, whatever events you'll be holding this year will be similar in size to what you've done last year? Which well, I'll... Scott, I would love to tell you but my <laughs> wine club has double, but it has not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I think it's very safe to say that. I mean, it's exactly the same type of event. Um, and as your club grow, your club also, you know, um, diminish in the same time as, you know, so, yes. And we attended uh, at least one of those, and it's a beautiful space in the back, and uh, I'd love to yes. see it. Yes. I've got a question for you. You lease the space, correct? Absolutely. So does the use permit stay with the owner of the property like if, if her if she leaves the lease what happens to, to the use permit use permits run with land um, if she were to leave and a business that was pretty similar came in and proposed something pretty similar theoretically they and and the use didn't lapse there's a kind of a six month window before uses lapse theoretically they would be able to pick up that use permit but it'd have to look pretty similar to what she is doing And, and I would like to say that I, I think Commissioner McNair, um, one of the applicants earlier, and, 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 and kind of said good things about the Patels. And I would like to say the thing about you. I know that you, and we're, you're here, you go again and again and again for these constantly to get the, to, to do the right thing, I guess is where I'm going with this. And it, it's, it, a lot of people do not do that in this town, a lot, a lot of people. So I want to commend you for that. And I think it shows character. I think it shows where it, what we should be doing, and it's important to our community as a whole to follow that kind of example. So appreciate the fact that you've, and I've talked to Zach at great length, you know, of all of the things you've had to go through every time you want to do anything, but that's what you're required to do. So uh, I need, as I guess it's, it's a character thing. I think it's very important and gives people confidence, no matter who you are when you come up to the microphone. So uh, I kind of want to reinforce uh, Commissioner McNair and her statement earlier. You know, people in this community you know they they work hard and and they support each other and i think that's very important because you do get a comfort level with these folks and you know they're going to do it right so i i do applaud that and sorry for all the inconveniences that you have to go through <laughs> maybe that can a little bit could be remedied right. okay <laughs> well said okay and that's all i have any any other questions from commissioners it is a public hearing so claire i'll if you maybe someone else would like to speak it doesn't appear so Okay, then I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Um, yes, staff. I, I would just like to note through the chair that um, in her original submittals to us, she also included her holiday events for like the tractor parade and right. Halloween parade. Um, I, to her credit, she did include those. Um, I think as we all know, every place downtown throws yes. in a, a party or an event on tractor parade night. Um, and I assured her that she did not do, need to get special permission from you to have something for the tractor parade or other holidays. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. Very good. Thank you. Uh, um, commissioners. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to uh, go a little step beyond this and say that, that uh, understanding that you're sort of unreasonably responsible um, for doing the right thing. What this is ultimately trying to do is to, 
take the burden off both the, the city and off of you of every single time you want to blow your nose coming in and asking for permission. And, and uh, so I would like to propose um, changing a little bit of this and it is not necessarily in response to your responsibility, but in terms of a response to the uniqueness of this courtyard, I'll, I call it a courtyard. Um, it is unusually private, um, unusually um, untroubling of, of the other properties around. And, and I would uh, be sort of inclined to remove these these stipulations of it can only be used from from March to November and things like that and say the courtyard in in the terms of the acoustic music and those sorts of things would be available for you to use as you chose um, and and see how it goes and if it turned out to be a problem we certainly hear about it and, and you would you know we could bring you back but but at this point I would say let's make it a little less encumbered and and so that it just removes the question of, gee, do I need to go you know, run this through the city again? That's and, so I would suggest that we we modify that in terms of the approval. Can I make one comment on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, I, I think I, I agree with you 100% for this business. I, I wouldn't want another business to come in and and take advantage of of, of that uh, amendment to the use permit. Yeah, we always have the ability to pull a use permit back. Okay. And Commissioner Allen's right too, and this is fairly unique too with what you know, the, the, the courtyard, as yeah. you call it, and everything. Um, and, and another thing is, we are supposed to be here encouraging local business people right. in any way we can. Uh, and, and, and she has a, a, a ripple effect of the people around if they come right. in. The, she's we're in downtown. People will go in other stores, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. So I, I, I applaud the suggestion. Uh, she's doing well. something that's working. It works for uh, everybody. Hundred percent. Yes, okay. That being said, I'll entertain, entertain a motion. Just through the chair, yes. real quick before yes. you entertain a motion. Can I? maybe get a little bit of clarification from you you guys yes. specifically what language you want modified or included or not i, um, I think you're I, referring to condition two yeah condition <clears throat> two and 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 what i'm saying is that you have <clears throat> you have enunciated specific events sure and i think it's it's good to enunciate pickup parties and and uh, wine club dinners i don't think it needs to be limited S some wineries will switch and go to four pickups a year um so if she does that that's fine but it's okay. every winery er every wine club does that so let's just say wine pickups wine club pickups and wine club dinners and then the i would say that under the sort of the ground rules of rules that you've established of acoustic music and such that the courtyard is available for her to to use you're round. Could could we add some language on A there? Movies or an amplified music or similar events? Similar events, something, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's February and we were all on our porch today, so <laughs> it happens. I also wanted to clarify that there uh, would not be requirements for in-loop parking, or is that something that's based on the future? So that's not included in the proposed resolution? obviously wanted to make that discussion something you guys could you, the planning commission could consider i for one don't have an issue with it i if a, if a store wants to stay open until nine o'clock we're not going to ding them um for that so it's sort of like i, I don't have <clears> an issue with it yeah neither do i it's sort of difficult to forecast based on the location so i i think that should be avoided one more item through the chair the the planning director appointed me um in the spirit of commissioner wilkes proposed changes does the Planning Commission want to keep Condition 6 in there, which is providing notice to neighbors about events? I, I would say adjacent neighbors. Okay. Um, it would it be possible to just provide a blanket notice with contact information and not for every single event? Sure, absolutely. But the good neighbor clause is never a bad thing. Right. <laughs> Are you good? Um, I will prepare to make a motion. 
Um, I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving a use permit allowing limited special events as amended um, at an existing wine tasting and retail business at 1329 Lincoln Avenue. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so much for public hearings. Moving on to H1, General Plan Annual Report, status of the Calistoga, excuse me, Calistoga General Plan and progress made toward an implementation in 2019. Later on, the Crystal Geysers. No, it's not. It's general no, government. it's not. It's just a Read your government. agenda, <laughs> Vice Chair. What does it say on the back? Sorry. Okay, so much for that. Anyway. Uh, staff. Okay, now we're into the controversial That's part okay. of the That's meeting. That's why I sit here. Okay. You're up. <laughs> um, yes, this is the annual report on progress made towards implementing the Calistoga General Plan. As you know, the General Plan in part establishes guidelines for decision makers through goals, objectives, policies, and actions. And using these guidelines, the City Council, this Commission, and the Active Transportation Advisory Committee takes incremental steps towards achieving the larger goals of the city. Uh, city staff also implements policies and actions contained in the general plan through day-to-day -day operations. The state requires the city to submit an annual report on the status of its general plan and progress made towards its implementation to the council, the governor's office of planning and research, and the Department of Housing and Community Development. So uh, that is what is before you. Just a brief, uh, a little bit of a correction, um, just to get you up to date on what was happening with the infrastructure element. You may have heard that uh, when we brought it to the Planning Commission last month, um, we were proposing to fold um, the provisions, of, relevant provisions of the geothermal element into the infrastructure element and uh, rescind the geothermal element. Um, since then, we've received direction from the City Council that they would prefer to keep the geothermal element as its own standalone element. So uh, I did not have an opportunity before the packet was, uh, well, the packet was, yeah. Anyway, you received it before that action took place. So we actually have 11 elements. Um, we have um, updated uh, about half of those with assuming the uh, adoption of the modified infrastructure element and then the uh, geothermal element. Um, we did not amend the general plan itself in 2019. However, we're recommending that um, consideration be given to amending the general plan in 2020, specifically updating the 2003 economic development uh, element. There are many actions in there which were intended to help reduce unemployment. Check, we've done that. Um, it also calls for the development of high-end visitor accommodations check. We've accomplished that almost. Uh, so there are a lot of things that where the circumstances have changed and are no longer applicable, but um, it's still appropriate to uh, maintain an economic development element as part of the general plan. But we are suggesting that um, the council direct staff to commence um, an update of that. I was hoping to get it done this year, and. It, or 2019 it just didn't happen so um, what is attached to your staff report is just um, some highlights of actions that were taken in 2019 to implement the general plan I'm not going to read all of those but um, we were actively working to implement the general plan and then uh, as an attachment to that is a detailed summary of um, every action in the general plan and relevant actions that were taken in 2019. Uh, I should note that these include, uh, doesn't include actions that have been completed. Um, so there are many other actions in the general plan, but we've actually ticked those off. So um, or completed them. And so I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, your, your action on this would be to recommend its acceptance by the city council, which would then direct us to file it with the state. Thank you. Yeah, um, excuse me. Uh, commissioners, any comments, any questions of staff? Commissioner Allen. Yeah, I, I spent a half an hour with Zach on the phone today uh, talking through a lot of these. I'm sure all of us in this room could spend a half an hour or more talking to Zach about what's in this report. So I will spare the, the group um, the hours of discussion this packet could create. I just want to note that I have a lot of thoughts on some things in here and uh, the more appropriate time I will share my thoughts on a lot of the actions that are in here. 
but thank you for putting it together. And I appreciate you getting up to speed. It's, there's a lot to learn uh, it, it, when you first come on. There's just so many things. And for a lot of us, it, we've seen it so many times. But for you, I watch you. you you're doing well. Thank <laughs> you. And you're, you're very involved. And I think, and I applaud you for that. So um, thank you. I just wanted to say this represents a lot of time and energy. And it's much appreciated, all of your efforts, uh, what you've done so. it's together for us. OK. So. Recommended. We do. We just. There's not really a vote, is it? It's no, there's consensus? not a resolution or anything just, like that. It's just, just a consensus. Um, that, yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. Done. Recommended. Uh, city okay. Council very good. Recommend. You got okay. it. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Ah, Commissioner Wilkes. Commissioner Wilkes. <laughs> H2 Crystal Geyser Water Company Landscaping Fence and Fence Design reviews the landscaping and fence designs required by PC Resolution 2020 2. Um, I'm not sure because it's not an actionable item that I have a conflict, but just to err on the side of safety, I'm going to turn it over to the Vice Chair and I will excuse myself from the meeting. Okay? Because I live within the 500 feet. So I will though. depart. Wait, well, yeah, I live way, way closer than that. But I will turn it over to Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Wilkes, and I will depart. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item on our agenda is the Crystal Geyser Water Company Landscaping and Fence Designs. Um, and this is coming back to us from the proposal that we heard a few weeks ago. Um, so do we have a staff report? You do. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, at your January 22nd meeting, a public hearing was held for the use permit and design review for the expansion at Crystal Geyser Water Company at 501 Washington. Um, after the public hearing, um, you did include some additional um, conditions of approval related to this application. Um, just briefly, one was that the landscaping and the architectural improvements proposed along Washington Avenue's frontage come back to you. Uh, the second was there be a design for a 16-foot tall fence along Camp Drive to screen the equipment. Um, you know, in addition to all the other trees and landscaping. Um, I will also note, for the record, a third item that you you included as conditions of approval, but not to come back to you. But I just want to note it. Um, was that all of the lighting on the property, not just new lighting, be converted to dark sky compliant lighting. Again, that's not something in front of you tonight, but I can, can say happily that the applicant has already submitted to us updated plans that show all of the lighting being converted to you know, downward facing, shielded, dark sky compliant lighting. So, to their credit, they have done that. Um, to the two other conditions though, um, what you see and have in front of you are updated architectural and landscape plans um, starting on Washington Avenue's frontage. A new um, arbor structure is proposed that would screen the new blow molding expansion. The arbor structure is primarily made out of wood, although there are some metal components and some decorative uh, trellises that made out of metal included. Um, over time, it would be anticipated that um, uh, vines and different plants would grow up and provide some additional screening and interest along this um, this arbor structure along the Washington Street frontage. It does cantilever out a little bit over some of their stormwater retention areas where they've also provided a landscape plan showing what they're proposing to go in there. This is entirely on their fee title property. It does not impinge in any way on the right of way or the public sidewalk. I know it's a little hard to read some of the drawings, but it does not cantilever over the public sidewalk. Um, in addition, um, the other item that was discussed and required, as I noted, was that 16-foot fence. Additionally, they had come in with a proposal for a 10-foot fence. Um, some of that stems from an old administrative use permit uh, from about a year ago where they were required to do that. So they were proposing to, to do that, in fact. Because of the tanks, because of potential noise concerns, visual concerns, light concerns, uh, your commission did require they come in with plans for a 16-foot tall fence. What they're proposing is a 10 foot tall redwood fence with six feet of anodized aluminum bronze, dark bronze colored louvers at the top. It's more lightweight, it allows airflow, it's just a lot easier to build. They did confer and internally we conferred with the fire chief and he, he, he had some concerns about a 16 foot tall redwood fence along the property. Um, so 
I, I think the design is, is, is pretty attractive. It, it, it's contemporary, adds some visual interest. And if you will see from the landscape plans, they're also providing a lot of additional trees they're planning on uh, planting, including redwoods. Um, so in addition to the screening from the fencing, um, you know, over time, these trees are going to grow and that's going to provide additional fencing far and away beyond the 16 feet that will be provided by the fence. Um, you don't have a formal motion in front of you tonight. As noted, this is just a general government item. So looking for any other input, concerns you may have. Um, applicants team is here. I'm sure they're happy to come up, provide additional information, answer any other questions or things that I did not answer. Um, with that, I think that includes or concludes my staff report for you. Okay. Um, any questions to staff? I think I'm going to save mine for the applicant. Okay. Is this now this is not a public hearing? This is not a public hearing. Okay. Um, does but the applicant is here if if they would like to present from their standpoint if, if you would like if, to invite if you, the you don't need to but or if we have questions to the applicant good evening commissioners city staff um, thank you very much for having us back um, our packages name please for oh, the record sorry, thank Rex you Rex. thanks <laughs> I should have learned um, but uh, our package is to come back and respond to and reflects the quality and the character of the facility that uh, Crystal Geyser wants this to, to eventually come into. It grows into fruition and, and expand. So I'm here to ask, answer any questions. Okay. I wanted to ask you about the new 48-inch chain link fence at the back of the property. The, um, one of the conditions when, um, because of the properties have bioswales which collects the natural stormwater and we're required to treat that stormwater before it goes to any natural waterways. So that bioswale, that's what it is for. The um, chain link fence um, is there to ensure that the property owner can provide um, its protection because there's an agreement required by the city um, to, to maintain that. And, 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 the, and the property in the back is not well maintained and it's not taken care of at this point in time. And I think we needed a clear division between that at the edge of Crystal Geyser Waters property and the adjacent property okay. to meet both their, the statutory requirements of the agreement, the division of responsibility. So you're protecting the area from neighbors that might walk on the bioswale or from? To protect the bioswale because it has a job, it has a job to do. And so we can't have the adjacent property owner there mowing it, changing the character of it, putting items on it because there's not a clear boundary where the property line is. Or, or what you see on camp um, there a lot is people trying to park on it. <laughs> so that's, that's real common. I was just thinking about like your average um parking lot there are a lot of bioswells that are contained yeah. in the islands and they're not normally protected by a fence and we're trying to beautify the property so when i saw right. uh, the addition of another chain link fence i became concerned <laughs> yeah but this is a it's a private driveway and there's no curbs that's true so there's no so barrier. people just park everywhere okay any uh, well, i just want to thank you for so quickly addressing the the new fence condition and coming up with a really attractive design very thank impressed. you appreciate it um, thanks staff for getting us to get it done. I think that was uh, <laughs> Vice Chair Wilkes. Uh, <laughs> do you have any questions? I, um, I will say that, um, I was, first of all, this will be a part of the building permit for the bottle facility, the balloons you're going to make. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, they're blow molding facility. Blow molding, that's what it is. <laughs> and 
Uh, and so the ultimate occupancy permit for that building will be attached to the completion of this landscape. That's correct. Correct? Okay. And you're comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. Beyond that, I would say, I, w I will echo uh, what Scott has said, is that you got back here quickly and, and I would, from my standpoint, um, surpassed my expectations. Um, so I, I certainly appreciate that and thank you for it. And um, we appreciate having a client that's willing to participate. W we so. all appreciate that. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Okay. Um, I think Paul has uh, abandoned us. Um, matters initiated by commissioners. Any? Nothing? Director's report. So uh, staff would like to recommend that the commission delete its delete. <laughs> uh, cancel. cancel. It's March 11th meeting due to the lack of agenda items ready for your review. Because we uh, took care of all of them tonight. Well, actually mm -hmm. we did. I mean, we piled on. This, this could be right up there with one of the longest planning commission meetings I've been to in seven years. You, you've um, said that for the past two meetings, the two meetings I've been at. <laughs> <laughs> usually we're out of here in 28 minutes or less um, and I'd also like to advise you that we interviewed candidates for planning and building director today so um, hopefully we'll have somebody in place before I depart at the end of next month and that's all. Okay. Um, a motion to cancel the meeting of March 11th yes so moved second all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. I'll second, second that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. <laughs>